welcome back to the Kristen Amdahl Show. This is episode 1044 and we are here live in Southwest Florida in uh, my backyard, I guess. <laughs> We're behind my RV in my driveway in a screened in tent, uh, which is really awesome. It's a housewarming present from a friend. Uh, if you are joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you're crafting today. Let me know if you have questions for me and happy Tuesday. I'll wait a few minutes for people to pop over from uh, pre-chat and notifications. If you're new here, this is a live stream show. I am live and you can ask me questions in the chat. The chat opens up for pre-chat 30 minutes prior to me going live, which means you can chat with everybody else for a half an hour, up to a half an hour and then you can chat with everyone and me during the show. Hi Thea and Doris, hi Joe and Mickey. Uh, yes, this is like a lanai, absolutely, and I'll show you around in a little bit, and it opens up and closes kind of like an umbrella stroller, so it's super easy to set up. Um, comes in a bunch of sizes. I have the extra large, I think, which is a 12, uh, 12 foot room. Uh, you can find it in my Amazon shop. Yeah, pop-up gazebo, I guess is a good word for it. And it condenses so small that it fits in a bag. It's really cool. And I was able to set it up all by myself. Thanks, Mickey. Hi, Chris. Hi, Angela. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Hi, Gerilyn. Welcome back to the Kristen Omdahl Show. This is episode 1044. I thought I was gonna have a special guest this morning, Bjorn, but he's not feeling the outdoors this morning. <laughs> you know, he, uh, he, we are both living in the RV now and he's been here since the day after I got, since the day I got home from taping Knit and Crochet now season 13 last week and he is doing extremely well. I have been sharing updates with uh, Bjorn in on my personal Facebook page and on one of my Instagram accounts. I know, you know, on my professional pages, people get really iffy. People get really um, upset sometimes if I don't focus solely on knit and crochet and yarn. So it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm always trying to figure out where to share what because I know a lot of people want to see anything I want to share and some people get upset if I only share the things that they want to see. So uh, just always trying to figure things out. Uh, hi, Margaret, good morning. Bjorn's doing great. Uh, he is really adjusting well in the RV. He likes to go for walks on his leash sometimes. We were doing really great with it every day up until yesterday. Something must have spooked him outside and now he doesn't want to come outside, which is fine. So I just, I offer it to him and uh, I offer it to him and then he uh, chooses. And today he said no, so I did try. <laughs> Hi, sunshine. Yeah, he's eating well. He's using the litter box just fine. He's cuddling. He's hanging out with me. He's finding spots to have alone time. He's doing fantastic. I am extremely grateful for how well Bjorn is adjusting at the moment. So that's good. Let's see. So since the last time I talked to you, I went to Indiana and I filmed season 13 of Knit and Crochet Now, and that went really well. It did a doozy on my... Uh, sprained ankle standing so much and traveling and all that good stuff but uh i'm just trying to take it easy and hopefully my ankle will get better here soon i haven't been able to exercise or go for walks nothing uh hi ellen i missed i think barbara maybe i missed a bunch of names i'm sorry but i appreciate you all being here thanks for joining me see okay so we did indiana we did the show as soon as i know when the show is going to be available i will let you know you can watch it on pbs on create channel and annie's the producers they also offer it digitally and they offer it on dvds and when all of that stuff is available you will be the first to know as soon as i hear and we've got some great projects to show you this year i think you're going to love it I had so much fun coming up with my outfits too, you know that. <laughs> anyway, and all my outfits that I wore, you can find in my Amazon shop as well. Okay, so I said I'd show you the, let's see if I can turn this around so I can show you. Okay, well, let's just unzip it, I guess. I'll unzip it and go out so that I can turn around 
and show you how big it is. <laughs> Isn't that huge? It's funny, when I set it up, it brought back such fond memories for me of when I was in Israel. I had visited some Bedouin tents out in the desert and they were so gorgeous. These beautiful Bedouin tents were out in the desert. They had Persian rugs and rugs on rugs and then rugs rolled up to make seats. And then they made some of the most amazing food. One of my favorite meals I had in all of Israel was in a Bedouin tent in the desert. They made homemade labane, which is uh, a cheese made from yogurt and they made homemade pita bread on an open fire pit. It was just spectacular. Anyway, we had to leave early that day though because the head chief of the group offered money to my husband to sell me to him. And my husband didn't like it, ex-husband, uh, and, and we left abruptly. Who knows how much of the story was true. He said he offered a million dollars. I find that hard to believe. I think he would have sold me if he got offered that much money. But that's another story for a different day. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going off on tangents this morning. Yes, yeah, someone asked about the kitty condo. Yeah, I brought it out for Bjorn here. He doesn't like it too much yet, but he's just, he's adjusting. So anyway, I love sitting out here. This is just spectacular to me. And I have... I'll tell you one thing that I am so glad I got introduced to a while back were these Inno fans. These I take with me everywhere now. I use these outside. I use them inside the RV. They char You charge them with a USB cord and then they have 18 hours of fan. They are amazing. So I have it set up on the pedestal right now so it's on the floor next to me but when i'm inside the rv i put it on my nightstand to sleep at night when it's just the short version and if i turn it off and i have two of them so i always have one charging while oh i didn't push it down all the way i always have one charging while one is in use look at that isn't that adorable there's a light on it too and there's an uh, a diffuser for essential oils but honestly, I just love the fan. I love it. And I love having two because then one's charging while one's running. And it's so hot down here <laughs> that uh, I couldn't be more grateful for them. They're so convenient and so portable. Let's see, what else have we missed? It's been a week since we've been here together. I have been doing videos with live premieres so that you still are able to chat with everybody and chat with me. Um, I'm just having a hard time scheduling everything and figuring out my new life this new lifestyle living in an rv has lots of challenges and uh, i'm excited to learn everything but it's still a process and i'm just having a hard time figuring everything out and trying to figure out how to make enough money to survive so lots going on uh update about the flowers outside remember we did crochet 3d flowers and put uh, them on the wall they did not get affected by thunderstorms. They are fantastic out there. I'll see, I'll flip the camera around real quick so you can see. See those? Hi, Melanie. Can you see them out there? Let's see if I zoom in a little bit. Look at, they look fine. They did fine in rainstorms, which was my only hesitation in decorating outside with uh, yarn, but I am so impressed with how they've handled rainstorms and wind that uh, I wanna continue decorating out here now. So that's cool. All right, another big thing that I wanted to share with you is my new book is ready. It's called Crochet Power, Making Stitch Patterns Work For You. It is kind of a stitch reference book, but it's so much more than that because it shows you not only how to do a whole bunch of beautiful stitch patterns worked even in rows, which is how all stitch dictionaries work but it also shows you how to modify that pattern to work even in the round like for cowls and tubes and how to increase in rows let's say if you wanted to do a top-down triangular shawl and how to take the stitch pattern and work from the center out with increases to make motifs or squares or anything two-dimensional that you want big you could make an afghan even with them so 
each stitch pattern is shown in all four ways with charts. It's 14 point font, which is that larger font that I use in all my books to make it super easy to read. Um, and while it's in pre-order right now, if you buy the book on pre-order, I will be gifting you the ebook for free. It's a $12.99 value. So the day the book ships, when it's no longer pre-order, I will be gifting the ebook on that date. So if you place your book order in pre-order stage, you'll get the ebook for free. Otherwise, when the book is in stock, then they will both be available individually. Okay, does anybody have any questions about that? Hello, Edna. Hello, Linda from the UK. Thank you, Joe. And I would love to show you some of the samples from the book. I pulled a couple out this morning. In fact, I went to the storage unit to get them. It's 123 pages, Melanie. Thanks, Chris. All right, so. I, I'm going to show, I grabbed, this one is the Bailey, so I'm going to show you the Bailey one. And so over the course of time, I will be showing you tutorial videos to go along with each of the stitch patterns in the book. And I started that yesterday. That was the first live premiere yesterday. And I will be doing, um, yes, it's a prickly pear cactus behind me, sunshine. It is. And I think I saw a fruit on it yesterday. I never did see flowers but it looks like there is a red fruit on it. We have to take a side tangent for this, right? Can you see that red? That looks like a fruit. Now, I do remember when I lived in Israel, I had gone on a hike one day with some friends and turns out there is a male and female version of a prickly pear plant and he ate the wrong one and he had these microscopic needles in his tongue and in his mouth and it was horrible and he was in excruciating pain and we were trying to get an ambulance to come out to the hike because he couldn't even walk. He was in so much pain because he had so many needles in his mouth that I will never eat one off of a tree. <laughs> I don't know the difference between a male and female version of a prickly pear and so I'm going to pass. It was so traumatizing to watch my friend in so much pain remotely where we didn't have access to medical help that, um, yeah, I I think they're beautiful. I'm really grateful that I have this beautiful thriving cactus in my backyard, but uh, I never want to eat it. <laughs> oh, my vines, the Mandevilla vines are taking off and going up the trellis. We'll talk about that too. But in the meantime, let's look at Bailey. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you is how each of the stitch patterns in all of Crochet Power are laid out. They come, you're gonna see the stitch pattern shown four ways. This is working even in rows, okay? And then it also tells you the multiple. So however many chains you need to start, it shows you the multiple so you can figure out to make it as large or as small as you want. Anything from a pair of earrings to a king size afghan, whatever, a scarf, a shawl, whatever. It tells you the multiple, then tells you how to work the rows, then what the repeat is for the rows, and it's all written out in chart form as well. And so, and all of these stitch patterns, when they're done in even in rows, they're all going to be gold. Then when you look at all the stitch patterns worked even in the round, okay, so even in rows means it doesn't change stitch count. It's always gonna stay the same going across. Then even in rounds is always gonna be purple. And that's showing the stitch pattern worked in the round for making cowls or hats or whatever, right? And so that's worked in the round and that's worked in rows. Then it's also gonna show you how to do top down increasing in the pattern so that you can do, that will t show you how to do increases if you would want to do top-down triangular shawls, top-down half hexagon shawls, uh, raglan shaping for uh, a yoke on a top, or anything else that you'd wanna add increases to in rows, a skirt, a cape, whatever. And top-down, uh, an increase in rows will always be this peach color. Then 
but wait, there's more. And then there will be increase in rounds section for each stitch pattern. And when you see those, they'll be color coded in green. And here's how to work from the center out, work that very same stitch pattern, but in increases in the round so that you can create flat growing pieces. So you can do motifs. You can do larger pieces. You could make one large square for an afghan or a throw or a rectangle or a square shawl, or you could make them into smaller motifs to make anything that you want to have square or for joining them together with each other. So everything is color coded. Increase or even in row, even in rows will always be gold. Even in rounds will always be purple. Increase in rows will always be peach, and increase in rounds will always be green. Okay, and we do that and charts and written instructions and multiples and how to continue in pattern is all written for each and every one of them. So lots and lots of ways for you to be able to empower yourself to make anything you want without patterns. In, in, uh, and then in the front section, I also give you um, regular dimensions for different things. So like hat sizes, at what are the dimensions for different sizes of afghans from a baby blanket all the way up to a king size afghan uh, different sizes for different uh, different dimensions for different sizes of shawls for different size uh, dimensions for home decor things like placemats and table runners and uh, washcloths all sorts of things so uh, yeah the link I'm pretty sure Judy has shared the link to pre-order the book, but if uh, you haven't seen it, I'm sure it be, will be in the um, video description in the show notes when the show's over as well. Yes, yeah, so it's 19 different stitch patterns shown in the four ways with hundreds of projects, with hundreds of projects shown in the dimensions so that you have unlimited possibilities for making different projects. There's the link. Judy just posted it right now. So it's available for pre-order on my website. If you pre-order it from me, you will be given a free copy of the ebook when the book ships. It is a $12.99 value for free. Once the book is available, then it will um, they'll be sold individually, both on my website and on Amazon. Thank you, Rosa. Does the book include project patterns? No, this is a reference book. It does not have actual patterns in it. Honestly, uh, there's so much information in there though that uh, there's there's so many there's so many different ways for you to learn in this book. It's pretty amazing. And like I said, I'm going to continue to make video tutorials and share them with you to help you along with supplemental videos as well. Does anybody have any questions? Great questions so far, everybody. Isn't it wonderful that, uh, uh, you know you know how much I love live stream with the chat. You know how much I love this. It is amazing that you can ask me questions in real time and I can answer them in real time. Okay, I will wait and see if there's any questions and then we will move on. I'm gonna do a little demo this morning too. I have, uh, you know, uh, thank you, Linda. Okay, I don't see any more questions, so we will move on. If you end up coming back if you, later today, if you have more questions, always feel welcome to come back and leave them for me in the fixed comments. I get notified from those throughout the day, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions whenever you have, whenever they come up. Uh, I have worked on this book for a long time, Nancy. That is correct. I have. And it's a concept that I've wanted to do for years. Uh, I'm very, very excited to develop a stitch dictionary like this or a stitch reference book like this. I feel like it has everything you could possibly want to explore crochet without patterns. I think it's very exciting and a great way to empower other people to just explore their own creativity. All right. 
Okay, no more questions. All right. Uh, so one of the things that I've been doing as I am changing my lifestyle completely and downsizing, sometimes you have to end up buying things because the old things you had aren't don't fit in your new life. I live in 200 square feet now, so space is really an issue. And so condensing things down has, and having multiple uses for things has been really invaluable to me. So <laughs> allow me to introduce you to my new favorite kitchen gadget and wait till you see what else we can do with this. It's a salad spinner, but it has all sorts of chopping mechanisms inside. So here's the lid for the spinning. But once you get inside, you have this this piece so let's say you take the spinner out all together you can also use it for chopping veggies right into your salad bowl so there's three different things for grating on here and then there are more then there's this one as well and two slicing ones as well and this one will julienne cut i'm excited to do that one for salads as well and then there's even this little thing here that protects your hand so as you're slicing things into the bowl, and I love the fact that it just, it all goes right into the one bowl. So very condensed way to not only, so now I have my mixing bowl for a big salad and I can do all the cutting and the chopping. It's, it, it replaces a whole bunch of different things that would take up a lot of space in my very small kitchen. And so it all condenses down. And so then you also have the salad spinner, which if you've never had a salad spinner, they're really fun because they get, you can wash your vegetables, especially lettuce, and spin the water out very easily. I don't know, something about it, I think it tastes better when you spin salad like that. I think it actually tastes better, especially if you add really cold water or even a couple of ice cubes in your water when you uh, soak it before spinning. It makes your salad even crunchier. It's amazing. So that's what you can do with this in the kitchen. But <laughs> yeah, Judy, but wait, there's more. Um, Obviously, I don't have a washing machine and dryer anymore, right? So I have actually gone down to the laundromat, and I did my laundry in a laundromat the other day. And I'm surprised that the prices haven't gone up that much since uh, when I used to do this when I was younger, when I didn't have a nice apartment with a washing machine and dryer. And it's $1.25 to wash in quarters, and it's $0.75 to dry in quarters. They're small machines. You can't really get that much in there. It's just a load, whatever. And they had a sign on the wall that said, 26 minutes to wash and 42 minutes to dry, which I thought was great because that meant I don't have to sit there and watch it the whole time. And oh man, was it hot and humid in that room. Anyway, another story. But what I'm not gonna be able to do in there is use the rinse and spin cycle for uh, hand wash projects, right? I used to do that on my washing machine when I didn't have to put quarters in it. And I'm not gonna put quarters in uh, a, a machine like that and uh and and waste it and not get to use the full amount I, it just it doesn't make sense and they're old machines i don't even know if i'd know how to do it so i've got a great idea we can spin out the extra moisture after washing or rinsing our yarn projects in a salad spinner now this will only work with smaller projects so here's one that i grabbed and this one's been worn a whole bunch of times this is the knit zen scarf that uh could be worn as a shawl or as a scarf, and I've worn it as a scarf a whole bunch. So it's kind of like lost some of its shape, and I've worn it a bunch of times. And what do we do when we wear something a bunch of times? It gets dirty, we need to wash it. So whether you wanna call it washing or blocking, doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna show you a little demo here of putting it in my salad spinner. Yeah, you could use a bigger salad spinner for bigger projects, sure you could. You could also just do other things as well. Yes, Sanchelle, some larger, more luxurious RVs do have washers and dryers in them. I don't have one like that. So, so I'm just going to put enough water in here. And this is a demo. I'm not doing this, obviously, for real. I didn't even add soap. I'm just going to show, I just wanted to demonstrate to you how easy it is to get the water out. You know how normally we roll them in towels and we squeeze out the excess water without wringing? Um, this is way more effective. So I'm, let's pretend now that this is sat for here, sat here for a while. And we've got these great little holes in the side here. So once I clamp the lid on, 
I can literally, I brought out a bin. We'll pretend like that's my sink. <laughs> Okay, so we can keep the we can put the lid on. Make sure I get this clamp down right. There we go. And you can pour the water out this way. Now I could just start spinning at this point, but let's not try to. You know, there's times when you can push the envelope and see if you can get more out of a product or not. But here's the thing. I want to use this for lots of things, including my salads and stuff. So I don't want to, I don't want to try to test its strength by doing, by rinsing a heavy waterlogged shawl right away. So it's got a lot of water in it because all we did was tilt the water, tilt the water out. So I am going to squeeze it out a little bit here. But wait till you see how much water comes out when I start spinning it. It's amazing. Okay. So I'm going to put this back in the salad spinner. I'm trying to get you a good angle here. I'm not doing that great, am I? Okay. So we've got it in there. If I back this up just a little bit more, you can see more. Okay. And we'll start spinning. Okay. Watch. I got water out already. I'll do it again. Hard to do on your lap. I would suggest doing this on a table for sure. All right, let's see what we got there. And I would just keep doing this until there's no more water that comes out. All right, got another tablespoon or so. I feel like that's a pretty, and now it is definitely more damp than wet. It's not nearly as waterlogged and I can go lay it out flat to dry. I could pin it out, I could stretch it out, do whatever I need to do to get it back to the shape I want it in and lay it flat to dry. And out here in this heat, it'll dry in no time at all. Isn't that wonderful? And I just love having multiple uses for things. But even without this feature of it, I think it's an amazing salad maker too. The fact that it has all you can slice and shred and do all of those amazing things and spin and like I said the colder you make your water when you rinse your lettuce even adding ice cubes to it the crunchier your lettuce will be once you spin it out of there and if you're a big salad lover like me that's a great tip <laughs> okay and like I said being that I live in such a small place having the ability to put everything all the pieces fit inside that is a humongously multi-purpose tool that all sits together condensed and can sit in a drawer in a small space so win-win all right does anybody have any questions about that And while I'm waiting to see if there's questions, I can go show you an update on some plants. My avocado tree that I'm growing from an actual avocado pit is looking amazing. All right, let's see if we can sneak back here. All right. Ah, this is the shawl that I did in the salad spinner yesterday. <laughs> Uh, the salad spinner is in my Amazon shop. You can find it there and it'll be in the show notes. Look at my spider plant. Look at all the babies coming back. I can, I can, I can find a place to lay it flat to dry for sure. I also put 3M hooks up here so that I can dry shawls up here. I might even try doing it up there. 
that's the that's the shawl version of the Isabella poncho pattern okay so here's where I wanted to share some updates here's my here's my avocado isn't that amazing from a pit <laughs> He's looking fantastic. My uh, orchids, I don't know how they're doing. Uh, we're just trying to figure it out. Yes, Carrie, ice definitely makes your um, lettuce much crispier. Okay, and here's my plumeria. Look at, we've got some leaves up top there. And I have some root hormone uh, on the root, so I'm to try and grow some roots. I'm really excited about that and then here's my chicks and hens and over here this you guys are gonna love this look at the vines taking off so this mandevia it's interesting this one has flowers and no vines this one has vines and no flowers I have a feeling that once the vines take off the energy goes there instead of flowers it's what I'm guessing anyway but can you believe how well this is taking off like is that exciting or what i cannot i cannot wait to see the progress on this i am having so much fun watching these babies grow <laughs> and oh and let's do a close-up of the crochet flowers look at how fantastic they're doing they don't look any worse from the thunderstorms don't they look great? In fact, the wall needs more of them, if I'm being honest. And I could do it on the other wall over here. Uh, one thing, oh, I've got a couple more orchids over here that are, I don't know how they're doing. They're not, they don't seem to be doing that great, but they do want full sun and they do want water every day. So just trying to figure it out. I bought this umbrella used on Facebook Marketplace to try to protect my plants from um, the harsh sun, and it's broken. And I think they, I think they sold it to me broken. I think I'm not very happy about that, but whatever. Uh, that's what happens. And then here's all of those cactus, aren't they? Just incredible. Oh, and these are little friends that I've been given as gifts over the years, the two turtles and one bunny. They've been outside my front door at my house for years, and I knew I had to bring them with me. And honestly, wherever I travel, as soon as I travel eventually, um, they will always come with me and always sit in the yard. There's, I don't know, they're very special to me. They're little friends. Okay, I'm not having luck with my pineapple growing from the top of a pineapple, but for the person who just said that they've had trouble with growing avocado from a seed, one of the things that I've learned from following some di different plant people online is, thank you, Twanisha. One thing that I've discovered is that there's a product called, product called root hormone. And if you dip the cut end of whatever you're trying to grow in this it helps grow the roots so in the future now that i know about that and now that i have a little pot of it i found it on amazon uh and you can find it at home depot and uh, anywhere that plants are sold it works it works really well and it helps speed up the process of growing plants from food garbage and whatever else that you're doing uh so just wanted to share that tip as well all right we talked about a ton today uh does anybody have any questions so hot. Uh, what's the biggest challenge of living in the RV and what is the most fun thing about it? This, that's a, those are great questions. Uh, there's a lot of challenges. First of all, you have to learn, you have to relearn everything that you thought you knew from cleaning tools for your bathroom, cleaning tools for everything, uh, finding the right toilet paper, finding the right cleaning supplies, learning how to fix things. Um, those are all, and those are all really big challenges. I had a plumbing problem over the weekend, and I had an electrical problem over the weekend, and thanks to YouTube and my determination I was able to fix both of them on my own so that was really exciting and empowering but it's also terrifying at the same time so that's one of the biggest challenges for me is having to relearn everything and uh, one of the one of the things that I like the most that surprised me uh, I love 
how quick it is to clean. <laughs> I could say, okay, it's time to clean house and in 30 minutes be done. Like mopping floors, cleaning bathrooms, all of that stuff. Uh, it's amazing how easy it is to clean. And um, because I've had to downsize so much, I have no clutter. There's a home for everything. So when I'm done with something, it goes in its own little home and everything's put away. So no clutter and easy to clean is really wonderful. That part I like a lot. And you know, I'm constantly learning something new, but you know me, I love to learn anyway, so <laughs> that's fine. Because I had to run to the storage unit to get samples to show you from Crochet Power today, I thought it was a good reason to go get a smoothie at Tropical Smoothie. They have a super healthy one there called the Detox Green Smoothie. It's only 180 calories, no sugar. It has mango, pineapple, ginger, kale, and spinach. It's so good. I agree, Barbara. Thanks, sunshine. Love all the questions, everybody. Does anybody have any other questions? I'm working on it, Twanisha. But honestly, the biggest fear for me was just getting Bjorn okay. I could live in a, I could live anywhere. I could sleep anywhere. Um, Oh, no kidding, Carrie, if it was legal. Like, I, I will go by people's houses and I want to take clippings of their plants so badly, but I think that's stealing. <laughs> but if I could ever ask, I definitely would, because there are some amazing plants at other people's houses too. And also with the root hormone, I can just, I'm going to do more with um, food waste, you know, uh, growing plants. I want to do a lemon tree and lime tree from a seed from them. I did that at the old house. I want to do that again here. I want to get my pineapple going and anything else that makes sense that grows down here. Uh, how are Marlon and Jess? They are good. I saw them yesterday. I am uh, almost finished setting up my barbecue outside and as soon as I do I want to cook for them. I'm very excited. I got a uh, told you my barbecue got stolen as I was moving it out of the old house, which was wild. Uh, anyway, I got a Blackstone griddle, which is a tabletop griddle grill, and it's sitting right behind me over there, and I'm 90% done setting it up. Now I just have to attach the propane tank and season the griddle, and as soon as I do, then I can start cooking on it, and I'm so excited. I haven't cooked a meal, like cooked, in two months now. <laughs> I've been eating... Uh, drinking a lot of protein shakes and eating a lot of salads and eating out sometimes but i'm really excited to get back to cooking again but... val's lemon tree is six feet tall that's amazing did you buy it as a tree or did you grow it from a seed and scarves are my new favorite accessory i wear a scarf on my head almost every day it's a great way to uh not do the top of your hair. It's so much easier to braid than deal with the top of my head. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I love it too. I love sitting out here. It brings back, back fond memories of Israel and it's just, it feels so safe and comfy. Uh, I love it. And I have a rug in here. It just, it feels like I have a lanai again. It's amazing. I'm so happy. Val, you grew it from a seed. Wonderful. I have a lemon in my fridge. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I better, I'm going to open it today and start sprouting one of my seeds. Or maybe a couple. That's so exciting. I love hearing that you did that. You've inspired me to get on it right away. <laughs> All right. Anybody have any other questions? All right, well, if not, I have scheduled live premieres at 9 a.m. for the rest of the week, so it won't be a live stream like this, but we will be live every day, and I'll be in the chat chatting with you before the show, and, or before the video and during the video, so if you have any questions, you can always feel welcome to ask me. And this week, we're starting with the Even in Rose, the Even in Rose section of Crochet Power, and I'm doing supplemental video tutorials for all of them. Oh, that's so cool, Val. So cool. 
All right, and if you have any questions about anything we talked about today, always feel welcome to come back to the show when it's a recording and leave your comments or questions in the comments and I can answer you when I read them. All right, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed my demo, my show and tell, answering questions, chatting with me and everyone else. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow for the live premiere of the next stitch pattern from Crochet Power. Bye-bye.